Over the last few years, due to missteps and troubles that have become well documented by now, there's something that we must not forget. In their prime, Bioware were flat out among the best developers in the industry, masters of an entire genre of video games, and some of the most effective storytellers that we've seen in this medium to date. Of the many, many games the studio has made, there's a huge number of them that can be classified as all-time greats. In this feature, we're going to be taking a look at all the games Bioware has ever made, except for a couple that were on mobile devices or made for web browsers, and we're going to rank every single one of them, starting with the worst one and counting down right to the very best. So without further ado, let's get started. Number 17, Shattered Steel. Though Bioware is a studio associated with RPGs and storytelling, the first game they ever made was something completely different. Shattered Steel was a mech action title, which took cues from the Mech Warrior series, but it went for a more accessible and action-oriented style of gameplay, which you can translate to, it had more mindless explosions. Shattered Steel was a decent enough game with enjoyable action and a story that, for its time, was at least mildly entertaining. It was, however, a far cry from the kind of games Bioware would build its reputation on, and go on to be associated with, and it's, as a result, often altogether forgotten. Number 16, Sonic Chronicles The Dark Brotherhood. A Sonic game that's an RPG made by Bioware, exclusive to the Nintendo DS. What? Strange as the combination was though, Sonic Chronicles The Dark Brotherhood managed to not be a total disaster. There was nothing that it did very well, but by that same token it's hard to point at anything in the game and call it offensively atrocious. The story was lighthearted and occasionally entertaining, but largely forgettable. The RPG mechanics made for some decent combat scenarios, but inconsistencies in other areas made it feel all a bit unneeded. To its credit though, The Dark Brotherhood was at least a decent game. At the same time though, it was also one of Bioware's most forgettable games ever. Number 15, Anthem. Anthem is emblematic of everything that's been going wrong with Bioware over the last few years. It's a game that suffered a disastrous development cycle, and the final product that was delivered into our hands shows exactly that. Technical issues that hamper the experience every step of the way, and a disheartening lack of content are only the tip of the iceberg. Anthem also reeks of a game that doesn't know what it wants to be. It wants to be two games at the same time, but it's unable to be either one successfully. All the Bioware hallmarks of old, a tight story, a solid cast of characters, sharp writing to pull you in, it's all missing from the game, while the content that it does have feels repetitive and grindy. There are a few mechanics in there that deserve credit for their ideas, like flying and its focus on flashy abilities, but even those mechanics are never utilized to their full potential. Not even close. Anthem has the benefit of being a live service game, so for all we know, Bioware might still be able to salvage it. But as things stand right now, it is without a doubt the most disappointing game this legendary developer has ever made. Number 14, MDK2. MDK2 came after Baldur's Gate the game that would go on to define the identity of the studio for many, many years to come. But instead of carrying on with the RPG genre, Bioware instead decided to make an action-adventure title. And back when it first came out, it was actually received really well. MDK2 was praised for its fast and exciting combat, its butter-smooth gameplay, excellent boss encounters, a level of challenge that many actually considered daunting, and what were at the time cutting-edge visuals. As time's gone on though, MDK2 has often left out of the discussions about Bioware simply because of how different it is from what the studio is known for and associated with, while the game itself hasn't exactly aged very well. But as one of the very first games Bioware ever made, it was nonetheless an impressive effort. Number 13, Dragon Age 2. Dragon Age 2 holds the ignoble tag of being one of the most disappointing sequels ever made. Origins was a game that was widely loved by one and all, whereas Dragon Age 2 somehow managed to forget everything that made Origins so good. The game, much like many others on this feature, went through an absolute mess of a development cycle, being put together in less than 16 months and the final product being very much representative of just how rushed it was. From its shockingly small-scale story to its more action-oriented combat that dropped the tactical nature of its predecessor, from its excessively reused environments to its claustrophobic linear nature, Dragon Age 2 was pretty much the exact opposite of what players wanted from a sequel to Dragon Age Origins. Though Dragon Age 2 was still a game that you could get some level of enjoyment out of, because some of its characters did showcase the trademark Bioware flair, it was ultimately regarded as a hugely disappointing sequel, and rightly so. Number 12, Mass Effect Andromeda. Mass Effect Andromeda bore an enormously heavy burden of expectation, 
promise as it did to be the next step forward for the legendary Mass Effect franchise, a step that it planned on taking with an essentially clean slate and a brand new story. It would have been hard for any developer to cope with such expectations, and Andromeda sadly crumbled under the weight. In hindsight, Andromeda is by no means a bad game, but no one wanted the successor to the Mass Effect trilogy to be okay. Where the original trilogy's characters were brimming with an excess of personality and propped up by incredible writing, Andromeda's cast was tame and bland. Where the first three games constantly showed off Bioware's imagination and storytelling chops with rich lore and fresh stories, Andromeda seemed perfectly content to just do more of the same and not even do it as well as its predecessors had. It also felt the need to go open world, which turned out to be a pretty bad decision while issues with the Frostbite engine and a rushed development schedule also resulted in significant technical issues. Andromeda has some redeeming qualities, though. The pieces it put into place in terms of narrative for future installments were exciting. Its combat was kinetic and fast and probably the best the series has ever seen. And now, after several patches, the game no longer suffers from embarrassing technical issues as it once did. So yeah, Andromeda is a decent game, but by Mass Effect standards, decent does not cut it. Number 11, Star Wars The Old Republic. Star Wars The Old Republic was nothing anyone ever wanted. Knights of the Old Republic was legendary, and it was the game that first made Bioware known beyond the CRPG niche they formerly used to occupy. At launch, The Old Republic was not very good. Though it actually did a surprisingly good job with its emphasis on storytelling and narrative, the gameplay did nothing new, and the tale itself went nowhere special. Over the years, The Old Republic has actually become a pretty good game, and it's one of the better MMOs on the market right now, but by and large, it's hard to wash away the disappointment associated with it, simply because it had the misfortune of not being Knights of the Old Republic 3. Number 10, Neverwinter Nights. Baldur's Gate was great. Baldur's Gate 2 is, to this day, considered one of the best RPGs ever made. How could Bioware follow up on that? Well, not as well as you might have hoped. Neverwinter Nights ended up being a hugely ambitious game, with marvelous graphics, an incredible sound design for its time, and a very well-realized setting of its Dungeons & Dragons world. And before live service games would become Bioware's downfall, it also had an entire mode dedicated to running your own campaigns, Dungeons & Dragons style, by connecting to an internet service, which was an incredibly daring move that they pulled off surprisingly well. But the writing and role-playing possibilities never quite came close to Baldur's Gate 2, or even Bioware's follow-up games. This isn't to say Neverwinter Nights was bad, because it was not. As mentioned, there is a lot to like about it, but it never came close to approaching the already high standards the developer had set for the genre with its previous games. Number 9, Dragon Age Inquisition. Coming off the back of the widely maligned and incredibly disappointing Dragon Age 2, Bioware were feeling the pressure to get the series back on track. With Inquisition, they may not have reached the heights of the game that kicked off the series, but it was a game that was by and large an excellent RPG. Openly taking cues from the open world success of Skyrim, while going back to large scale narrative focus of Dragon Age Origins, Inquisition delivered something that may not have been the most polished or well rounded product, but it was still a game that did justice to the name of the franchise and the developer. Strong lore and world building, an endearing ensemble of characters, a captivating narrative, and a story that kept you hooked were all present and accounted for, as one would expect from a game made by Bioware. While the game also eschewed the suffocatingly linear and disappointingly minuscule scale of Dragon Age 2 to deliver something that was almost diametrically opposite. In 2014, Dragon Age Inquisition emerged as the game to win the most Game of the Year awards, and though there's certainly a case to be made that that was more down to the fact that it was a relatively barren year more than anything else, the fact still remains that after all was said and done, Inquisition was an excellent game, and successfully managed to do what it had set out to do, take Dragon Age back to its glory days. Or, well, close enough at least. Number 8, Baldur's Gate. At a time when the CRPG genre was floundering, and the Dungeons & Dragons titles of role-playing games were all but dead and buried, Bioware staunchly held true to their vision, their passion, and they made the game that they wanted to make. Baldur's Gate was a watershed moment in the industry, pretty much single-handedly reviving an entire genre and paving the path for much of what we now consider to be staples in any Western role-playing game. With some age, Baldur's Gate has lost a bit of the luster that it held for many years after its launch, not just because of how much progress we've seen in the CRPG genre, more recently with modern masterpieces like Divinity Original Sin, but even because of how comprehensively better its own sequel was in almost every way possible. That however diminishes neither the excellence nor the legacy of Baldur's Gate, a game that shaped not only Bioware as developers, 
but a very significant genre of video games as well. Number 7. Jade Empire Jade Empire is, to this day, probably the most unique game Bioware has ever worked on. Sadly, it's also often the most commonly and criminally overlooked. Its unique setting is probably one of the most immediately captivating Bioware has ever worked on, with a striking visual aesthetic to boot and the narrative that went along with it was imaginative and captivating. The combat veered more toward action than role-playing, and some might find its relative simplicity a bit off-putting, but it worked wonderfully well with the game's overall tone and direction. Caught between the long shadows of the likes of Mass Effect, Dragon Age, Star Wars, and Baldur's Gate, most people often forget that Bioware also made this refreshing, mystical action RPG. But as anyone who's played it will tell you, the game deserves to be mentioned in the same breath as every one of those heavyweights. Number 6. Mass Effect 3 Mass Effect 3 had a lot to live up to. Not only was it a sequel to one of the highest rated games of its generation, it also had to wrap up an entire trilogy's narrative, while taking years worth of choices made by players into account, and do so in a satisfactory manner. Whether it accomplished that last bit is a matter that's up for debate. Mass Effect 3's is one of the most controversial and maligned endings in a video game ever, after all. But the one thing that cannot be denied is that barring those final 20 or so minutes, Mass Effect 3 was an exceptional game. It delivered one epic moment after the other, alternating between moments of incredible scale that had major consequences on entire races, and more personal moments that highlighted the excellent characters and their relationships that the series had built up across almost 100 hours of storytelling. If it had had a satisfactory conclusion, Mass Effect 3 may very well have been in contention for the very best game Bioware has ever made, and that speaks volumes about both the quality of the game as well as how disappointing the ending was. Number 5. Mass Effect The pitch for Mass Effect went something like this. Star Wars, but Bioware's very own Star Wars. Their own sci-fi space opera universe, which they would create, own, and develop to tell an epic saga that they could have full control of and use to flex all of their creative muscles. Casey Hudson's ambitious vision for Bioware's new IP turned out to be a stellar one and culminated in one of the very best games the studio has ever made. Mass Effect was a game that was emblematic of everything that Bioware was good at. Though the RPG mechanics didn't go as deep as they did in something like Baldur's Gate, they were layered and engaging. The narrative was a thoroughly arresting one, aided by excellent writing, memorable characters, choice and consequence mechanics that were implemented very well, and rich lore and world building. Some things, like the frustrating Mako sections, held the experience back a little bit, but by and large, Mass Effect was the beginning of something excellent for Bioware. Number 4. Dragon Age Origins with Dragon Age Origins, Bioware wanted to go back to an experience that would play and feel like a modern day version of the games that they had started out with, from Baldur's Gate to Neverwinter Nights. Coming fresh off the heels of the first Mass Effect game, the pressure was on the studio to deliver a game that was equally excellent, if not more so, and boy did they deliver. Dragon Age Origins was a CRPG enthusiast's dream come true. Tactical and engaging combat defined the experience every step of the way, while the things that the developer had come to be associated with, strong characters, excellent writing, weighty choices with actual consequences, could all be found in Dragon Age in abundance. In typical Bioware fashion, Dragon Age Origins had a strong and memorable cast of characters, personalities who stayed with you long after you were done with the game. Even on a macro level, the lore Bioware presented with the world of Thedas made for fascinating storytelling and narrative structuring, as it lent itself to creating a vivid and rich world. Number 3. Baldur's Gate 2 – Shadows of Om Baldur's Gate 2 is pretty much the perfect sequel. It knew the strengths of its predecessor, which was already excellent on its own, and it improved upon those strengths so much and so well that even in the absence of anything spectacularly refreshing or innovating, it managed to stand out as a landmark release. To this day, almost two decades later, Baldur's Gate 2 is regarded as one of the best if not the best, CRPG ever made. The fact that even all these years later its quality and brilliance have stood the test of time speaks volumes about just how excellent Baldur's Gate 2 was. Number 2. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic For many, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is the best game Bioware has ever made, 
and that is a very hard position to take issue with. Knights of the Old Republic was peak Bioware, mixing cutting edge graphics with gorgeous sound design, amazing characters, and a staggeringly deep and expressive system of mechanics that miraculously enough managed to remain incredibly accessible and inviting even to those players who might have stayed away from RPGs until then. Now take all of this and mix it with what might be to this day one of the greatest twists ever in gaming history, you know the one. Consider that Knights of the Old Republic can very legitimately lay claim to being possibly the best story ever told in the Star Wars universe. Consider the fact that to this day Knights of the Old Republic is every bit as captivating as it was at release. Seriously, go grab it off the Xbox store if you've never played it and give it a try, and you'll see what we mean. There are very few games that approach flawlessness, and even fewer games that actually manage to blend interactivity and storytelling well. Knights of the Old Republic was such a game, and it ended up being Bioware's breakout hit. The game that would preface their meteoric ascension to the status of one of the most highly regarded, most beloved developers of all time. There could not have been a better game to break that ground for them. Number 1. Mass Effect 2 This is it. The peak of Bioware. And what a peak it is. Mass Effect 2 was designed with a very clear vision. Take all that's good in its predecessor, polish it to the highest degree possible, and shed all the excessive layers that surrounded those good parts. RPG elements were trimmed down, the combat was made slicker and more snappy, while the Mako sections were removed altogether. It was a bold move for Bioware to tinker with what was already a winning formula, but it was a gamble that paid off like very few ever have. Mass Effect 2 is a masterclass in storytelling, delivering an epic, emotionally charged, ingeniously written space opera adventure that has heavy stakes, endearing characters, and actual consequences. Commander Shepard's journey across the galaxy brings him closer to a strong ensemble cast of characters, every one of whom is written and developed with meticulous mastery, and the entire story culminates in one of the greatest conclusions you'll ever see in a video game. Mass Effect 2 was dripping with an excess of personality and a singular focus on an end goal, displaying a clarity of vision the likes of which you don't often see in a video game. It also exhibited immense quality in every aspect of the experience, from the stellar soundtrack to the sharp visuals to the strong art design and so much more. Bioware gave Mass Effect 2 everything they had, and what they ended up with was nothing short of a masterpiece, where everything you did was tied to massive stakes, both large scale and small. In the end, it's probably fair to say that Mass Effect 2 isn't just the best game Bioware's ever made, it's quite simply one of the greatest games of all time. And that wraps it up. If you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing to our channel. We upload new videos daily. Also, don't forget to switch on the bell notification icon, that way you don't miss out on any of our videos.